Alrighty, I'm recording this video. You might be wondering what picture am I looking at? That's my bedroom. I know it's a mess, but I needed to make this video. And the reason why I need to make this video is because it's actually important. It's, uh, now I'm probably not going to public this for a little while. Um, but this is, uh, titled Evidence One for a reason. And one of these reasoning being this will hold in court in the future when I'm able to hold my family accountable for all of the physical and psychological abuse. I may not be able to show the evidence from years ago, but I definitely can show all the evidence from present time. And what I mean by this is, this is evidence one. There will be phone conversations that I'll eventually record. There's gonna be so many different other instances where I will record different things because I want to be able to actually find some clarity and to tell you the truth right now this is, feels like the only way i can do it i know my room is a mess but that's not the point let's just talk about things i got right so this this whole setup the pc the monitor all these things right around here right bought by me i did that i built the computer i paid 1800 or 1900 dollars for it i did it you know what I mean? Not one person helped me. Not one person supported me while I did it in my family. No one did that. A lot of them think it's stupid. And a lot of them blame me and shame me for that. And we're going to be talking more about that in a second. But let's show you guys the room. So, today, the room was supposed to be built. So, from this pole, I mean, there's a little, um, like, right after the pole, there's a little bit of wall. But I didn't take it in the picture. But this pole all the way to this side of the wall was going to be a wall, right? Just a wall and then a doorway right around here, which they're trying to get it to be on the far left of the pole, which makes no sense. Just put it here, you know, but whatever. I'm not surprised. Anyways, back to what I was saying. The reason why they're not doing that is because my mom doesn't have enough money. I just want to point that out because she would have enough money, but instead she decided to spend it on buying shoes and buying her like uh, workout station and all these different things which we'll get to in a picture later on but I just want to mention that because we would ha I would have a room and that's I'm sorry but I shouldn't have to be forced to share a room with a 16 year old number one that's just fucking weird there's no privacy so if I bring somebody over I literally couldn't bring them over I you know what I mean my sister brings her boyfriend over every single night pretty much and then I get kicked out of my room every single night so you know how that feels I feel like I have no privacy I feel like I couldn't do anything even if I could have a room I still feel like I wouldn't have any privacy I feel like if I was streaming I'd probably get banned for all the homophobic and the racist shit that my sister says and that will also be in the phone conversations because yes she honestly I think it's abuse but you know, I guess since I'm not in their relationship, I can't consider it abuse. But basically, my sister will say all these homophobic and different slurs and stuff like that towards her boyfriend, which is kind of crazy to me. Um, but the reason why I bring that up is even if he takes that and doesn't think that's abuse, it is abuse. I'm sorry, it just is. Nobody likes call getting called all that shit. You know what I mean? Regardless, it's just true. Alright, back to the pictures. So... This is my sister's room. A lot bigger, if you couldn't tell. Her room will be from this, past this dresser, all the way across here. Now, there will be, like, a walk area, so that I, they were trying to, they might take down that wall, I guess is what they said. I don't know if that's gonna happen. It, you know what I mean? It would be nice, but obviously, my whole point being is, like, this is her room? Do you see the fairness in that? She gets to have her boyfriend over pretty much every night. I get kicked out of my room every night. I have no choice in the matter. I've tried just, you know, doing it, but I, I, mean, I don't want to deal with it. So I just go up because I don't have a choice. I, I have no freedom there. Um, doesn't feel great. Anyways, so let's get to the dog kennels. So there's three dogs, as you guys can tell. Now, there used to be a lot more um, that I used to be forced to take care of, which I've talked about plenty of times in different videos can't really prove all that stuff but i can prove there's three dogs here you know what i mean and yes i still kind of have to take care of these dogs when i definitely shouldn't because it's not my dogs it's not my responsibility if you don't have time for dogs do not buy them if this is ever shown in court um yeah i don't know if it will be you know but they probably would show at least some of this yeah this is uh not okay um number one is i don't think other than when my sister lets them out of the kennel they're never out of the kennel like they're not gonna learn they're not gonna 
you know what I mean? They're not going to grow. And the dogs are not cut either, so they are also can tend to be really annoying when there's somebody here or something like that, and they're very hyper, you know what I mean? Anyways, that's my room. Alright, back to the door. Now there's something I didn't touch on just yet. I left it for now. But before I get to the door... Oh, wait, actually, no, it's the door. My bad. I thought I took a picture of the stairs, but I guess not. But basically, wait, I might have. I just might not have clicked it right. Oh, there it is. So these stairs, you know, it goes to where the bedrooms are, the two bedrooms, right? Now, with these stairs, my mom was standing right around here, and my sister was trying to leave out the front door. Or the, well, that's not the front door. That's technically the back door, but, and that's the stairs, right? And she was trying to leave. And my mom was standing here. My sister was screaming at her and shouting at her because they didn't go to the bank to do something with her car or whatever. I don't know exactly what it was. And then she shoved her here, and mom almost fell down the stairs. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because it is important, and uh, you can kind of tell what I deal with. Now, I admit I have my own issues. I do. Can, I can get angry. I don't ever really hit anybody. I've shoved my sister before. Um but usually because she shoved me and that was years ago still and on top of that let's be real for a moment all that like anger issues or whatever that exists does not go into my friendships does not go into my relationships does not go to any of that now what does go into those things is fear of abandonment feeling fear Feel, feeling lonely feeling like i'll never be loved feeling all these different things which is tragic enough and there's one more piece of evidence that I would need to get, and that's therapy. Therapy, I think, not only will help me be able to remember traumas that I do not remember, um, and be able to actually express them and realize why I have all these issues, but because that psychological damage can be used in court. And I would so do it. Because yes, like I said, I have these issues. But I fully admit them, and they will not be used against me. And on top of that, I've never, you know what I mean? Like, I've never really, I've, I've gotten in fights before, but I never did it because out of anger. I've never, you know what I mean? I've just never done that. That's just who I am as a human being, you know? And unfortunately, that's not the only scenario um, where things like that happened is you know my sister screams and shouts at my mom and things like that um all the time well mom i won't lie obviously deserves it i mean duh but my mom and my sister are very much alike they're very much narcissists and they're enablers because as i said as you guys know i have a video titled abuse on my channel let's just scroll down here just to you know show you guys what i mean about this now, with this, uh, with this video in particular, it talked about, or it didn't even talk about anything. It's a clip of my sister screaming at me, telling me that her sister, or her dad didn't abuse me. First off, she was born in 2006. I was born in 2001. They were dating for how many years before they even got married? And then, on top of that, they were only married for a significant, or a small amount of time. Anyways, this is the video I was going to show you. Your dad didn't hit me with a metal baseball bat. No, he didn't. Oh, okay. So you were like three years old. All right, cool. You don't even remember that anyway, number one. Number two, I had a friend literally say that. I had a literal friend see me hit. <sighs> I don't have friends. I don't have friends. Remember this, guys. It's funny how that comes from somebody who is a narcissistic really shitty person because she thinks she has friends that she treats her boyfriend like shit etc it just never ends number one but she won't say the things that she says to her boyfriend to her friends for example like homophobic slurs i'm sure there's a reason behind that right and um you know i i just want to bring that clip up and the reason why is like my the friend that i've mentioned here that's seen me get hit that friend was sitting on the corner of a street waiting for me because I wanted to sleep at his house. And the thing is, you can see in my poetry, for example, we're going to show you a few clips of here. I apologize for, you know, not having it up right away. 
but I'm going to, you know, it's for court. I'm sure they'll edit it eventually, whoever goes over it. Now, this is what I made towards my dad. And before I read this, I want to tell you guys about how my dad messaged me about the psychological and the lying that my mom used on him and told me all these different things that I didn't know now. Sure, this may not be true, but I do believe it to be true because of how I'm treated. And now my dad never messaged me back after I messaged him, which kind of hurt, to be honest. But I basically mentioned every single abuse that I went through. And uh, yeah, it hurt. Anyways. Hey Thank you for never being there. Empty birthdays are the days I felt empty. I understand my mom was a liar, but you left me behind. All I feel is no matter what's the time, I'll always be just that, left behind. By lovers and by friends, I sometimes I wish I could rewind the happy memories just to go back to a time where I wasn't left behind. Now think about how, how all these, before I click on this, think about all these issues I've had from relationships and, you know, going through abuse from relationships, um, you know, like physical, verbal, etc. Um, quite a bit of it is traumatizing because if you think about it, I also went through that with my own family, which told me that I couldn't trust anybody and that I was never going to be loved because obviously I'm not going to feel loved from shitty parents. Anyways, let's, continue. let's watch this. I remember screaming for help as you sat there watching me get hit. Being hit with a baseball bat all over because I just wanted to sleep at a friend's house. I remember being locked in my room just after he beat me. I remember how he punched me with rage. Hearing you speak to your friends about how you think it's okay to beat your kids makes me feel embarrassed to call you my mom. Well, mom, I will forever leave you alone. The thing is, my environment has gotten so bad that I actually hope something happens. And what I mean by that is, like, I wouldn't do anything. But what I mean is, like, for example, their car breaks down and they're stranded or something or they go on a trip you know what i mean like some random things just to give me a little bit more peace of the day if that makes any sense now i don't care what it could be anything just rather literally just don't care you know what i mean like i don't care if anything happened to tell you the truth i i'm at that point where all of this pain is just honestly turned to hate like i'm not gonna ever like act out on hate but, yeah, I hate them. I will never love my family. They will not be ever considered my family. And I, I, I mean that. It's hard to sometimes say, oh, you know, it, these people, instead of saying family, just because, you know, that's what I've dealt with all my life. But um, it's still a painful issue. But let's continue. This is a room where... Before this, this site or this uh, the work thingy uh, was here. That I forget what it, the I don't know whatever the the racing thing or the whatever it is. You know the workout machine. Basically, there was a room here. This room was my mom's ex boyfriend. Ex boyfriend now wasn't her ex boyfriend then. Uh, daughter's room. Now, would I argue that yes, this should be my room? It makes sense. There was a room here before. Instead of giving my own room or giving my sister one, they make me stay here. I love the hope of, oh great, I get to have my own room. Oh great, it's taken away from me once again. That feels amazing. So then she put up this workout machine in here, which by the way, she doesn't use. And there's also like some weights to the left that you can't see. But my whole point being here is this should have been my room. Without a doubt, this should have been my room. And guess what? It's not. I'm still forced to share with, honestly, one of the worst people I've ever known. To tell you the truth, I mean that. Um, I've already talked about being a scapegoat and how it feels to be a scapegoat. But it's so stressful. And just 
overall, it's painful. You know what I mean? And if, I, if I'm if i hanging out with friends like I did last night, and when I get home, I instant feel, or not even when I get home, while I'm going home, like they're driving me home, I feel that dread coming. I feel that pain. And then I feel a little ounce of hope that my room was going to be built today. And it wasn't. And it's not going to be. And it's not going to be for a long, long time. And this next week, I was supposed to go to a girlfriend's. Uh, We broke up. Um, So that feels great, especially with not having my own privacy and being able to actually, like, I don't know, express emotions and express things without having to deal with constant eyes on me, etc. Other than when they're not home, of course. That is a painful, and I mean that, it's painful to deal with constantly. And I don't know what to do about it. And I guess part of this, and the reason why I'm recording all, any of this for for the, for that matter, is to be able to actually express all the pain and issues, but also because this video is going to set itself up for other videos. There will be other evidence as I gather over time, like for example, phone calls. I would love to be able to somehow record phone calls. I don't know exactly how I'll do it yet. Um, maybe conversations or arguments. I think that is kind of important because then you can see what I deal with and that is psychological damage. Because yes, I deal with a lot of psychological damage. Just yesterday, I had to hitchhike. Yes, hitchhike. I hitchhiked to go to a public event in my town nearby to go see my friends because my family told me they would drive me, lied to me 20, 30 minutes and gaslit me saying they would drive me and then never did. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to walk. I know by the time I got there, if I did walk, that it would have been done by then, but I just didn't want to come home. And then I hitchhiked. I got into somebody's car, an older lady. That's its own story because, oh gosh. But, you know, it would have took them literally maybe eight minutes to drive there and then another eight minutes to drive back. Not that bad, if you ask me. But they didn't. They wouldn't. Which tells me they're lazy. It's funny because... Back to this room, my mom calls his daughter lazy, calls him lazy and stupid. But guess who comes here every single or every other day to go take care of my mom's shit? Her boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, who doesn't live in the house anymore that she kicked out. Number one, why are you coming back? That's weird, my guy. That it is. I'm sorry. If you're still talking to your ex about helping her house, that's a little weird. Like, it's a little weird. I'm sorry. It's just true. Number one. Number two, I have my own opinion about him, and I don't think he's the smartest person alive, or he's a clown. I'll just put it that way. He really is. However, when you're in a relationship with somebody, and you call him all these things, break up then! No, she let it go on for months. She was calling him lazy and stupid when she... The very first month we moved into this shitty little house. The first month. Now think about how much pain I dealt with just hearing all this shit. And knowing she does the same thing to me when it's her and him in a room, for example. Or her her and my, my sister in a room. I know the amount of shit that has been told... I, d- I deleted it a while ago, but I recorded a conversation between my mom and my or my sister, yeah, in the garage. They were talking about how I left and that they're glad I'm gone and that I have all these issues and all these different things. It's like, yeah, I have issues, but why do my issues exist in the first place? They wouldn't exist if you didn't. That's just the truth. If I had a good fucking family who knew what love was... I knew what what it meant to actually have a family, then just maybe, just maybe, I wouldn't have any of ish, uh, any of the issues I do. Just maybe, I'd feel a little bit of ounce of love from somebody. But instead, I've been forced to feel fear of abandonment, forced to feel lonely, forced to feel imprisoned. Forced to be depressed. 
to tell you the truth. And on top of all of this stuff, I'm still forced to deal with these things and they act like I'm a child. You know what stresses me out the most? About a week from now, I'm supposed to go to Florida. Florida isn't happening. I was supposed to go to TwitchCon in a couple months. That isn't happening. Now, the reason why is because of money, um, which is its own, you know, story. But uh, the reason why I'm bringing it up is, guess who is going to be shamed for not going? Me. My family is going to shame me, being like, I, think, I thought you were going here. I thought you were going here. You know what I mean? That is exactly what they're going to do. Exactly what they are going to do. Do I need to express how stressful that is? Things I hope for that don't end up happening and then I get shamed or like just treated like shit because they didn't happen? And then they're going to start saying that when I move, that isn't happening either. And to tell you the truth, if that doesn't happen, and it gets put off even a, like two months, I ain't going to be around. I'm just going to say it. Because that's how I feel. That is truly how I feel. I do not feel safe. I feel completely imprisoned. And I guess that's the whole point of this, is I'm gathering evidence. And I know, like, this probably won't be necessarily a lot of evidence other than, you know, me talking and expressing my emotions. And I know it's hard, but I need to do it because that's what I would have to do anyway. And to tell you the truth, I'm hurting. I'm hurting really bad. In so many ways. I, my, my depression has grown. In the last two months. More than it has in the last six months. I've done things that I haven't did since COVID. Uh, or I should just say 2020. But yeah. Um, a lot of those things uh, happened. And um, it sucks. And it hurts. A lot. And the more time that passed. The more... I want to do it, if you can get my meaning without saying. It's not that I'm afraid to say it, it's that it hurts to say it. Because I have stayed strong for so many years, but I won't lie, I think I'm thinking about it now. I'm thinking about how I won't ever survive, how I won't ever get out, how I will constantly deal with this pain. And how I will constantly, constantly be belittled. I will never have any freedom. I will never have any family. I will never have what they call love. Because I've never been loved, you know what I mean? I had more chemistry with somebody I just met yesterday at a stripper place than I've ever had in my entire life. I'm not even joking, by the way. Like, I actually met somebody, they were really cool, and they actually were really nice, and yeah, they were just nice, and I, they followed my poetry account, actually, on TikTok. That's a whole thing, but the reason why I'm bringing that up is just because the fact that I have more chemistry with somebody means that chemistry like that exists, like, love and just empathy exists, and the fact that I cried to a stripper... <laughs> If you think about it, it's a little bit sad because I didn't have what I wish I had. And I guess what I wish I had was just a reason to smile. And to tell you the truth, I had fun. Uh, my friends were there. They brought me. They drank a little bit. We just had fun. And it felt nice to just not have to worry about being home. That was until um, they closed, and um, we had I had to go home and live like an hour or two away, or it's two hours, yeah. And they dropped me off, but that entire time I just I didn't want to go home. I really didn't. But then there was that hope that my room was going to be built, and now it's not going to be built. 
to tell you the truth, I'm hurting. And I hope something changes soon. But it's time I gather as much evidence as I possibly can. I just gotta figure out all of the evidence I need. I don't have a lawyer right now or anything. I just know that obviously evidence needs to exist. Um, and that I'll probably contact one, even if I just can schedule a meeting, talk to with them and talk about my pain and be able to express the things I went through and see if there's what, if there's anything I need or if the evidence I had is enough. But even if I can only get psychological damages, I would like to do that because they deserve to, to tell you the truth. They deserve to lose their kids. I love my siblings. I really do. It's hard though sometimes because in some ways they defend, like if I say something about my mom, they're going to defend my mom, which kind of hurts a little bit because they don't know what I went through. And you know, the thing is they might never know or they might, but they might be the same way. That's my fears. They'll be the exact same way as them. And they, I, I mean that they don't deserve kids. They don't deserve it because they don't treat kids right. That's just the truth. The fact that I had more fun yesterday than I had in the last four years says a lot. It really does. And, um, more like five years now, but yeah. Um, it's hard. I, um,. I hope that eventually I'm able to figure something out. But I won't lie. I am losing hope. And I know I'm kind of just talking over and over, but I think that expressing my emotions itself can be a form of evidence. And I feel like it's important because other people who have went through this know it was exactly how it feels. It's a common thing to have the issues I have when you've grown up with the things I've grown up with. Here's the hoping, I guess. Just sucks. And I hope one day something will change. But we'll see.